Hi everyone. So um, it's been a while since I met you all due to this particular situation in the whole world uh, going on at the moment. So I wanted to do something online for a while now, but uh, the with the available resources I have at the home uh, to make something which you will understand clearly and uh, to give a better output. It took me a little bit of while this. Uh, to even to make this about in 50 minutes of a video clip it took days and hours of work to arrange everything out and uh, the amount of workload behind this is actually much more than the uh, duration of this video clip and hopefully the future video clips will be much more easier to uh, make with all the uh, improvements I have done and uh, so the motive of this video is to just keep you on track with the subject and uh, something I want to tell before I start with the lesson today is uh, we have got uh, due to this particular unfortunate situation even in this uh, kind of a global pandemic uh, what we have got is a very valuable resource a blessing in disguise actually uh, whenever we used to talk earlier even with my colleagues or friends or even students something we always complain about even myself is that we want to do so many things but we have so little time uh, at the moment we have been granted a uh, very long period of free time and most of us don't have much work and especially the students you don't have schools there are some online uh, classes and the studies going on but still even then uh, compared to your life before this corona uh, pandemic and uh, the life now when you compare there is a significant amount of time what you are have been blessed with and even myself as a person who used to be really stuck with classes 24 into 7 i have got a lot of free time at the moment and still uh, there are lots of other work which i have to attend to but compared to my life before say march what i have at the moment is quite a lot of free time um, which even i have made a resolution not to waste anymore and i should use it to do something useful learn a new skill and improve whatever I'm doing currently at the moment and focus on what to be done after this particular situation is over uh, hopefully as soon as possible so just like that um, just like I have made a resolution I want you all also to somehow come up with some goals which you would achieve before this lockdown situation in the country uh, goes away before this holidays goes away I want you all to come up with some resolutions which you will be taking today itself and will be implementing and uh, we'll be using utilizing this free time and uh, will come out as a better person as a improved person when you when all this is over so without much ado let's get into the lesson today and uh, this is actually a question a uh, question discussion and uh, this is going to remind you about a particular lesson in grade 10 uh, which will be very useful for another lesson in grade 11 second term uh, ironically uh, if the situation was normal we should be doing that lesson by now in the classes but uh, what we said and done uh, we are unable to continue any lessons anymore but there are some plans I have to somehow uh, keep you in touch with the subject which I will reveal in the future videos uh, but for the moment what I have to say so this is a lesson from grade 10 which will be helpful for grade 11 as well so I'm just going to remind you of how to uh, do this particular question which you did it in the second uh, online examination and uh, many of you had questions about this doubts about this so i took this question as the first question to be discussed in this uh, online revision program so uh, let's start with the question and i think you saw the question at the beginning of the video and even if you didn't uh, the question says there is a rectangle of which the length is x plus 7 and the area is 90 square units and the width is 9 units less than x plus 7. Uh, the very first issue I was uh, asked by some students is so what is this word units? Uh, you are not much familiar with the word maybe because there are very few questions in the textbook which uses the word but in examinations even the all level exams or even in the term test papers this is a very common word. Uh, what do you mean by units is children why they say x plus 7 units and uh, a equals area equals to 90 square units is to kind of um, not to complicate the question now this is already a question with algebraic expressions and if they include centimeter meter into these it would be much more complicated for you to handle so therefore to avoid that complication they just say x plus 7 units 
it could be centimeter meter or millimeter uh, area is 90 you square units maybe square centimeters square meters square millimeters the point is if they say units that means whatever the length they have given here whatever the dimensions they have given here all of them have the same units so you don't have to so in simple terms you don't have to bother about the units in this question and then uh, as I always say when you see a question always find out the starting point and here the starting point is very obvious now they are talking about the length they're talking about the area so this is basically we have to start from the area of a rectangle formula which is something even a grade 7 child can remember and the, the area of a rectangle as you all know area of a rectangle equals to length multiplied by breadth or width or whatever you call it so in this question they have given some data which we can fill into this the area is given as 90 the length is given as x plus 7 into the breadth that's where the problem starts i mean the question they have not given a breadth they have not given an algebraic expression for that what they have said is the breadth is 9 units less than the length so we, at this particular point only most of the children gave up on this question but uh, let me ask you the same question but i'll rephrase it in this way suppose if i say the length is 20 centimeters let's say and if i say the breadth is 9 centimeters less then you would immediately spontaneously without even thinking twice would immediately answer it as the width would be how much 11 centimeters now slow down that process a little bit what did you do there you did it instantaneously but what you did there is when i said okay this is 20 and this is 9 centimeters less automatically you understand that what you should do is from the length you have to subtract how much nine now the same thing when repeated using algebraic expression we tend to mess up but again even with algebraic expression it's the same thing if the length is x plus 7 and if the width is 9 centimeters less than that what does that mean is from the x plus 7 i have to subtract how much nine now when you are doing that simplification from x plus 7 when you are subtracting 9 for x you can't add or subtract x 7 or subtract 9 what you can do is you can simplify these two the signs are different larger number sign and subtract which gives you the width as x minus 2 that's how we find out the algebraic expression for the width that's how we find out the algebraic expression for the width now you can move back here and instead of the, instead of the breadth you can just mention the binomial x minus 2 so the length is x plus 7 and the width is x minus 2 now let me take a moment here to show you this expression is kind of confusing because there's multiplication and uh, you will probably when you're doing it in the exam you will uh, definitely confuse this with uh, bodmas and what to do uh, what operation to be done first so as i always advise you when necessary use brackets wisely and in here you can cover this length with brackets and also this with brackets now it's much more clear you take the length and multiply the whole thing by the width now uh, this expansion we call this as a binomial expansion is something you have learned in grade 10 i will do it a little bit quickly here because this is not something which is related to grade 11 uh, so basically you take x plus 7 and x minus 2 and you have to multiply both these terms by x first and you have to multiply both these terms again by 7 let's do them one by one x into x would be x squared x into minus 2 would be minus 2x plus 7 into x would be plus 7x and plus 7 into minus 2 would be minus 14 and there is one more simplification we can do that would be x squared this minus 2x and this plus 7x the signs are different so we put the sign of the larger number which is plus and subtract which would give us 5x and we have minus 14 here and also don't forget the 90 over here so that is binomial expressions and uh, expanding a binomial expression which is something you should be kind of very familiar with by now and if you are not i will be probably uploading some revision videos for grade 10 so i want you to catch up with that and uh, the next thing is right we have got up to this point 
and when you see this equation you understand this is not a normal equation this is not a simple equation uh, this is not a simultaneous equation this is what we call as a quadratic equation this is what we call as a quadratic equation so the definition of a quadratic equation is in an equation if the maximum power of the unknown term is 2 then we call it as a quadratic equation now I know that does not make much sense to most of you I'll put it in simple layman terms like this uh, in an equation if you have a x squared term in an equation if you have an x squared term then it is a quadratic equation this is an equation has an x squared term quadratic equation simple as that now if you want to solve a quadratic equation there are three methods you can do that but you have studied only one out of them so far in grade 10 that would be the factorization method the other two methods which are much more powerful than what we are going to use here uh, will be taught in grade 11 second term hopefully in the near future so um, if you want to solve this equation what you have to do is children take this uh, equation and we have to apply a very simple theory to this particular equation that theory is this children like uh, now you know if you take if you take any two terms any two numbers any two values and if you multiply those two numbers and if the answer is zero if the answer is zero logically and obviously we understand that uh, if two values are multiplied and the answer is zero that means one of those values must be definitely zero otherwise it could not be achieved now in here either a must be zero or else b must be zero otherwise this is not possible at all so we are going to apply this obvious logic into this particular equation but for that we have two roadblocks ahead of us one is to apply this logic one condition is definitely the answer for the equation must be zero but in here the answer is actually 90 but uh, you may understand a simple step can actually remove that roadblock very easily that is if you take the 90 to the other side then the plus 90 would become minus 90 and you will get what zero over here one roadblock moved and also at the moment I'll just take the liberty to simplify this here minus 90 and minus 14 altogether will be minus 104 okay so we have got the zero part right but there is another big roadblock ahead of us now for this to work okay as I said if two values are multiplied and the answer is zero then only we can apply this logic but in here we don't have a multiplication of two terms what we have is an addition and subtraction of some terms but that's when you should remember another lesson in grade 10 which we studied as factorization what happens in factorization is if you factorize this okay even though I would like to show the steps of factorization here the time limit does not allow us to do that so I will simply say if you factorize this you will get two binomials that would be x plus 13 and x minus 8 when you multiply minus 104 when you add it should be plus 5 so this factorization if you factorize this expression now can you see this bracket into this bracket this binomial into this binomial is 0 just like a into b is 0 then we can apply the same logic and say uh, if a into b is 0 we said a, a should be 0 or else b should be 0 similarly in here if this bracket into this bracket is 0 means either this bracket that means this x plus 13 must be 0 or else x minus 8 is 0 brackets not necessary anymore so one of these two binomials must become equal to 0 otherwise this is not possible now what we have got is two simple equations which even a grade 7 child could solve all you have to do is if x plus 13 is 0 x will be equal to plus 13 move to the other side minus 30 if x minus 8 is 0 minus 8 move to the other side plus 8 
and many children got up to this point entered these two as the answers in the online exam and they did not get full marks they got only partial marks and after that which i got loads of whatsapp messages asking so why this is wrong these are the correct answers the thing is children uh, if you want to go for a good results in your o level exams as much as you have to know how to do a sum how to do the maths behind a sum you should know how to answer the question correctly as well just by solving the equation given or just by doing the calculation given don't think you can as you, you can get the full marks out of an exam now see if this was a normal equation and if they have just asked us to solve this answer is actually nice neat and you can finish it and go ahead but in here the x is a length there are certain quantities which cannot take a negative value one is your height no matter how short you are it cannot be a negative value you are rank in the class even if you score the worst marks in all the papers still you can't get a negative rank you can't be the minus fifth child in the class uh, the position in a race likewise certain quantities cannot be given a negative value in here the length of a rectangle can be as small as possible but will never be a negative value therefore you should finalize the answer saying even though x is both these answers you have to mention since x is a length x can be only equal to the positive value which is 8 so x is equal to 8 units now hold your horses i know there are a lot of other people okay lots of other people who message me so saying the answer is 8 and we entered the answer but still we did not get the full marks again i am repeating children solving the sum is another thing getting the full marks is a different thing now see here yes x is equal to 8 but does the question ask you the value of x the question simply ask you find the length so the length of the rectangle is not x it's x plus 7 which means since x is 8 8 plus 7 the final answer should have been 15 units so only those who entered 15 as the final answer got the full marks for this particular question and uh, the others who came up to this point actually yeah, really good and uh, the thing is you should be more careful about reading the question and those who can't remember this question or this lesson at all i recommend you to please get back into the great ten tools and the materials i have already given you the short notes and revise this lesson back um in the near future i will be putting up a better explanation vi- uh, video about the whole uh, equations lesson uh, hopefully but till then i want you to keep this in mind and be on track with this quadratic equations lesson and the factorization method uh, till we learn the other two methods so right sorry for ruining some of your free time at this moment and i will be uploading some more regular videos um, after seeing the feedback of this i'll try to improve whatever the shortcomings in this video as well so stay home stay safe and take care of yourself um, hopefully uh, we'll meet soon in a physical classroom once everything is settled down and i'm waiting for these days and uh, till then bye